Today, there are no elephants living in North America. They are currently only found in Africa and Asia, but they did once roam America. So, what happened to them, and how did they get to North America in the first place? If we could travel back millions of years, then we would see the development and evolution of the proboscideans, or elephant-related animals. These developed in a world with a significantly different climate and geography from today. The proboscideans were incredibly adaptive and evolved along with the transformation of the planet. Elephant evolution began some 50 or 60 million years ago. The first creature was a small pig-sized herbivore with a long, flexible nose. With the appearance of open landscapes came significant evolution of the elephant's ancestors. Changes in atmospheric gases led to changes in vegetation and grasses. In return, the dentition of many herbivores, including early elephant-like species, evolved to enable the animals to consume these plants. About 3.2 million years ago, there was a big dispersal of elephant-like ancestors from Africa. Mammoths traveled to northern Eurasia, and Elephas planifrons traveled to the Indian subcontinent. 2.6 million years ago, glaciation occurred in the northern continents and sea levels dropped. This enabled animals to cross intercontinentally between Europe and North America. The mammoths migrated from Europe to North America around this time. Some of the early proboscideans or elephant-related animals dispersed from North America to South America during the formation of the Panama Land Bridge. It seems these migrations were driven by food availability, which was influenced by fluctuating climatic conditions. Towards the end of the Ice Age, approximately 12,000 years ago, there were three species of elephant living in North America. The Colombian mammoth was the largest, standing at 13 feet tall and weighing up to 10 tons. These ginormous animals were most closely related to today's Asian elephants, which, in comparison, typically just stand under 7 to 10 feet tall and weigh 2.5 to 5 tons. The other two species living in North America during the Ice Age and into the Holocene were the Mastodon and Gomphothere. These prehistoric elephants were smaller than the mammoth and stood at 10 feet tall and weighed up to 7 tons. Fossil evidence has shown these animals to have roamed over a wide geographical area, both in the Americas and Eurasia. We know that elephants, in the form of woolly mammoths, mastodon, and gomphotheres once lived in North America, but why are they no longer found there? There are several theories about why elephants and their relatives became extinct in North America some 10,000 years ago. There was an unexplained extinction event that took place at the end of the Ice Age, as the planet entered the warmer Holocene era. This event saw the extinction of woolly mammoths, saber-toothed cats, giant ground sloths, cave bears, and dire wolves. There have been five mass extinction events that we know of during the Earth's history. The most recent of these was the infamous extinction of the dinosaurs. The loss of much of the megafauna at the end of the last ice age is not considered a mass extinction event because there were only about 35 large animal species that became extinct. This is in comparison to 96% of the entire Earth species that disappeared 251 million years ago. This was the biggest mass extinction event in the Earth's history. The first theory as to why mammoths, gomphotheres, and mastodons disappeared is that early human settlers are to blame. These people who made the perilous journey into North America are known as the Clovis people. Some fossils of the huge animals of that time have wounds apparently inflicted by spears. Developing tools that could be fired from a distance at large, slow-moving animals like the mammoths gave these people an advantage. It is thought that the Clovis people hunted the mammoths and their relatives to extinction. In turn, this led to the extinction of apex predators, which had relied on such prey species to survive. Within 1,000 years, the Clovis people had spread across North and South America from Alaska all the way down to the southern tip of South America. Although humans almost certainly altered the flora and fauna in North America, there is some doubt that they would have caused the extinction of so many animals. Bison are a species that are still alive in North America today. They are herbivores that once roamed the open plains of North America in their millions. They were known to have been hunted by people, and yet they were not hunted to extinction as the theory suggests happened to other prehistoric animals. However, 
because the mammoths, gomphotheres, and mastodons had incredibly slow reproduction, maybe their birth rate became lower than their death rate. The second extinction theory is related to climate change. The Earth's climate towards the end of the Ice Age began warming up and entering the temperatures found today. An increase in air temperatures, melting of glaciers, and rising sea levels all influenced the animals and plants living on the planet at the time. But there had been previous Ice Ages. The megafauna that went extinct during the last Ice Age had survived previous fluctuations in climate. Scientists think that climate change this time was rapid. Species struggled to adapt to the change. In the case of the elephant's ancestors roaming North America, it is thought they struggled for food. With the changing climate and reduction in the ice caps, North America developed distant seasons. Not only did this lead to the boom of vegetation during summer months and bust during winter months, but the grass species changed too. Some grasses evolved in response to the changing climate and became less nutritious for the mammoths, gomphotheres, and mastodon. As a result, these giant herbivores died out. A third theory is that the disease carried by the Clovis people could have spread to the wildlife of North America. Wild dogs, rats, birds, and insects, which arrived with the first settlers, could have carried harmful microorganisms to the native animals. Although there is currently little evidence of this theory, scientists are looking into it as a possibility. A fourth theory, most recently, there has been the suggestion of an extraterrestrial cause for extinction. In 2019, evidence was found of an asteroid strike in South Carolina, Pennsylvania, and Greenland 13,000 years ago. Elevated levels of iridium and platinum were recorded. It has been suggested that the impact caused by a mini ice age severely disrupting the warming climate and flora and fauna trying to adapt to it. Today, scientists and conservationists are discussing the possibility of reintroducing elephants to North America. Would this be a good idea or not? Introducing a previously extinct species to a habitat will alter that habitat significantly. It would have an impact on the native flora and fauna. It would affect the ecosystem and potentially affect the lives of people living within close proximity to elephant reserves. Elephants are a keystone species. This means that they have such an influence within the ecosystem that their removal would have significant consequences throughout the food web. The destruction that elephants cause by killing trees and plundering farmland has been widely reported. Although in some areas, elephants are considered a nuisance, they can be incredibly beneficial to the ecosystem. Devouring acacia trees, stripping their bark, and knocking them over kills the trees. Elephants reduce woodland and open up grassland. Instead of the fast-growing acacia trees dominating the habitat, a wide variety of grasses, bushes, and trees can grow. This, in turn, creates an environment with a greater and more productive mix of browsers and grazers. The biodiversity of both plants and animals is greater where elephants are allowed to roam. Ecologists think that elephants would do well in certain regions of North America. There are areas in the west that are overrun with shrubs and small trees, which would benefit from elephant populations. Biological sciences professor David Burney says that tracts of Nevada, Arizona, and New Mexico containing vast areas of remote grassland could be ideal habitats for the introduced elephants. It is an ongoing debate. Should we reintroduce a species that once lived in North America, or should we focus on trying to preserve the species we already have there? That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time. time, time.